We are now moving on to example four, which this problem is very similar to example three. So if you think you understand example three pretty well, I encourage you to try this on your own and fast forward to the end to see if you got it right. But if you need a little bit more assistance, then you can keep watching the video. So like before, the goal is to isolate absolute value first. So everything in front or behind absolute value must be moved to the other side. So like last time, I will be writing the items that need to move in a different color. So you guys can see better what must move before we can split this into two separate inequalities to solve. Alright guys, let's dive on in. So this plus 5 must be moved to the other side, and the way we'll do that is by doing the opposite of positive 5, which is a negative 5, which will cancel out on this side. And we will subtract 5 from this side, and 50 minus 5 will give me a 45. So now I'm left with 3, which still needs to be moved to the other side, it is getting in the way and irking me. So, the way that we move this 3 to the other side, since it is multiplying to absolute value, we will be dividing both sides by 3. So on this side, 3 divided by 3 cancels out and turns to a 1. So we're left with 5x minus 10 is greater than 45 divided by 3, which is 15. So yay, now my absolute value bars are by itself. So since they are by itself, we now split this into two separate problems. So this is when I draw my nifty little line down the middle, and we can solve from here. So remember on the first side, we drop the absolute value bars and write everything as it already appears. So on my first side, I'm going to write 5x minus 10 is greater than 15. So basically, the first side, you just drop the absolute value bars and write everything in the same way that it appears. Now on the other side, we drop the absolute value bars, so I'm going to write 5x minus 10. But remember, on the other side, we change this to the opposite sign. So since it's a positive 15, that bad boy will change into a negative 15. And since we're technically multiplying this inequality by a negative, the inequality on this side will flip. Bam! It's flipped directions. It was facing this way, and now it's facing this way. Okay, so from here, we're going to get x by itself. And then after that, we have to determine if this is an and, or if this is an or. Let's see what will happen. So let's get x by itself. So I'm going to bring negative 10 to the other side. And the way we do that is by the opposite of negative 10, which is a positive 10. Add that on both sides. On this side, it will cancel and turn to 0. On this side, 15 plus 10 will give me a 25. So on this side, we are left with 5x is greater than 25. Now, the last thing we do to get x by itself is to move 5 to the other side, which 5 is secretly multiplying to the x. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So the way we move that to the other side is by division. 5 divided by 5 cancels and turns to 1. So we're left with 1x, or just x, is greater than 25 divided by 5 will give me a 5. So we have isolated x on one side of our problem, which means now we, meet, we need to move to this side. We're basically going to be doing the same thing on this side. So first, to get negative 10 to go to the other side, the opposite of negative 10 is a positive 10. So I'm going to add 10 on both sides which on this side we get 0, so it cancels and turns to 0. And on this side, negative 15 plus a 10 will give me a negative 5. So on this side, we are currently left with 5x is less than a negative 5. And the way we get x by itself, 5 is secretly multiplying to the x. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we divide both sides by 5. 5 divided by 5 cancels and turns to 1. So we're left with 1x, or just x, is less than negative 5 divided by 5, which is a negative 1. So from here, we need to get these inequalities on a number line and determine if this final answer is an and, or if 
it is an or. You'll have to see. So we write the smaller number on this side, which the smaller number is negative 1. And the larger number we write on the right hand side, which is a 5. And if you want to, since we already know this is not equal to, we know that our bubbles will be open bubbles. So if you want to go ahead and get ready for that, you can make them an open bubble. Alright guys, let's see what happens. So my first inequality, we're starting at the 5. And this one says x is greater than 5. So the numbers where x is larger than 5 are on this side of my inequality. So my arrow will head in this direction. Or remember the shortcut, since x is on the left hand side, the inequality points to the right, so my arrow will point to the right. Either way you want to look at it. Alright, then on the other one, my negative 1, x is less than negative 1, which the numbers where x is less than negative 1 are on this side, so my arrow will point this way. Or remember the shortcut, since this is pointing to the left, my arrow will point to the left. Alright guys, my cars did not, cr they did not crash, they did not collide. We have little bird wings right here, which makes this an or. Exciting, quite exciting. And since they didn't collide, I just shade where the arrows currently are. And I like to overemphasize my arrows, so I just shade that in. And I shade on this side. So that is what my number line looks like. And then my final answer... Remember for the or, it doesn't really matter. Um, I usually prefer to write the smaller number first, but it really doesn't matter. So for my final answer, I'm going to say that x is less than negative 1, or x is greater than 5. And that would be my final answer. And that would be my answer on a number line. Bam, that's done. Fun times.